So Yuri Bezmenov talked about four stages of psychological destabilization of a nation. Stage one, demoralization. Stage two, destabilization. Stage three, crisis. And stage four, normalization. And it is clear to me and a lot of people out there that we're now in stage two the destabilization phase. We have already gone through the demoralization of the West in general. It may vary from nation to nation, but we're already there. We have guilt, we have distrust of the institutions, we no longer have faith in our institutions. Many of us are ashamed of our history, ashamed of our nations and hate our own civilization. Now, clearly, this is part of a plan. I'm not saying it's a communist plan, because the communists simply were the first iteration of the control method. Not even the first, a perfected version of it. The next version is an even more perfected version of it because they now know what went wrong with communism and now they are delivering us the next control method which will be even more terrifying than the last. So what is the demoralization, the first stage? Well, we've, we've already gone through it, right? We just said People have lost trust in their civilization. And what does it mean, demoralize? It means you're no longer willing to fight, to die, to upheld that civilization. And now us being in the destabilization phase, what does that mean? Well, it means that there's chaos there's all these splinterings happening within our nations. Nobody knows the right path forward. There's no unifying message about our country anymore. The fundamental principles for which we once stood for are now in question and nobody really wants to identify with their heritage. So another aspect of the destabilization phase is that the, the institutions, the military, their fundamental natures will shift in favor of the new ideology. And we see this with the Baizhou in the, in the schools, we see this with the new military ads that a lot of people have put out recently. They're, commentary on, you know, the one with the, uh, well, I'm not going to get into it right now, but I think you know the one I'm talking about. And this is just part of the plan. Now, the KGB said that they only put around 15% of their budget into destabilization, destabilizing, sorry. Now the KGB said they only put in around 15% of their budget into actual espionage, intelligence gathering missions. The rest went to ideological subversion, which is the most powerful way to subjugate and destroy a nation. What does Sun Tzu in The Art of War say? defeat your enemy without fighting. If you could convince your enemy that the war isn't even worth fighting, then you've already won the war. And that's what's happened here with Western civilization. They have been convinced that it's no longer worth fighting for because it's inherently evil and therefore there will be no in the shift 
the new reset, the great reset, to the new world. Now Yuri Bezmenov is a very interesting character. He was a member of the KGB and the glorious Soviet Union and was working as an intelligence propagandist in India. He later defected to Canada, which is also an interesting story because he was actually fired from his job due to pressure from the Soviet Union put on Pierre Trudeau at the time. He was working for the CBC. And I have some experience in Canadian journalism. And I can just tell you flat out that if you are not down with the cause, you're not going to get a job. Because in the schooling system, they give the internships to those who are most down with the cause. The best internships, I should say. The ones guaranteed to get them the higher paying jobs within the media. Now, obviously, we're not being subverted into Marxist-Leninism in the classical sense, but there are elements of it in the new reset but it won't be as drab, it won't be as dull. There will be smiley faces. You will be made to be happy, to be smiley. Because if you're not happy and excited to be in the new reset, then you're probably not on board with the cause. So it will be a smiley face, Marxist, Leninist type of deal. Obviously, they'll still have um, consumerism. So it's not going to be like, you know, I should take that back. It's not going to be Marxist, Leninist. There will be elements of that. But it will be consumer, happy, happy type of dictatorship, which is the most horrifying to me because... Um, it's just not what I want to <laughs> have to live in. But Yuri was way, way, I mean, he knew. He was trained in these methods. His job was to do what is happening now, right? So he knew already. His Anglo name is Thomas Schumann, by the way. I think you can check out his books on Amazon. But... After the demoralization phase, this is the destabilization phase, which we're in. And I'm here in Eastern Europe right now. And I can tell you there is no real last bastion that people are talking about, right? There's no foothold left. People we're saying, you know, go to Eastern Europe, it's the last bastion of traditionalism in the European sense of the word. It's the last step. But it's here. Glow-B-ism is here in the very sense of the word of it all. I mean, I went to a monument here and there was a American flag flapping in the wind with the doors playing in the background. If that wants to tell you anything about where it's at here, obviously per capita, it's a bit different, but the Zoomers here are very similar to the Zoomers in Western Europe and North America. Because mass media is everywhere now, right? That's the thing about our era compared to Yuri's era is that the mass media is so much more powerful in its destabilization effects, its demoralization effects. We can't even fully grasp what has taken place in the last 10 years. The taboos of 10 years ago are now the norm. 
things that were unheard of 10 years ago are now mandatory in some curriculums in school. Now obviously I can't get into specifics because of YouTube, but I think most of you are smart enough to know what I'm talking about. If not all of you, lots of high IQ takes in my comments, which is awesome. Next stage is the crisis stage. And apparently that takes around six weeks. It's the uprising, it's the revolution. It's when they fully take power. It's when, if you don't capitulate to what they want, you go to the gulag and then you live that life which I have also examined in my review of the Gulag by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. I suggest everyone reads that. Good book. So, that's the crisis phase. They take power. And the ironic part of it is that the useful idiots are the ones who also go to the Gulag. The university educated by Zhao that we all love so much they are middle class people upper middle class people upper class people they're the educated class they're the bourgeoisie and they're so blind and naive and delusional that they don't even realize or acknowledge that they're in this class. They refuse to acknowledge their own bourgeoisie nature, right? They're not working people. They're not construction workers. They're not service workers. They're the educated class. And they're the ones telling us, the workers, that they have our best interest in mind. And that us workers, depending on our background, are more privileged than the educated class. <sighs> I mean, I've had people who are the sons of doctors tell me how privileged I am compared to them. Me, a uh, peasant. <laughs> But uh, I like being a peasant. It's been a good life. Anyway, these people are painfully naive. And they're the ones that Yuri says get lined up and shot first because, well, they're the most dangerous ones. They're going to be the ones who are going to be trying to destabilize the next reset because it's not going to be as easy a life as this one even though you'll be forced to smile you'll be forced to be very jolly and you know extroverted the introverts are the ones who are going to be really examined in the next reset because they're the ones who are quiet. Why are they quiet? Why are you so quiet? What's going on up there? Hmm? Have you heard this before? I think you probably have. Why are you so quiet? What's going on up there? Maybe he's not down with the smiley face cause. Right? So after that comes normalization it's when they have normalized the, the new world, the new reset, the great reset. They'll normalize the pods, they'll normalize banning meat and eating bugs and soy and transhumanism and all that fun stuff. But um, I'm not saying this is actually going to happen. This is what they want to happen, right? This is their grand plan, their great leap forward. So after that, yeah, the normalization will occur. 
and we will obviously not comply. Guys like me, guys and girls like you, you're smarter than that. You're not going to live in the pod. Back to the destabilization, another aspect I didn't touch on was the entitlements and payouts that the destabilization process would include. Basically, as we see now, people are making more money on benefits from the government from not working rather than working. So what is this going to do? People are going to become disillusioned with labor, with contributing to society. Why should they? And we already see this now today with the labor shortage. And it's just going to keep compounding because if people no longer believe in their society, if they're demoralized with their society, why would they continue to work for it? Why would they continue to contribute when they can literally make more than the minimum wage staying home? And we've seen this particularly within the last year, really increase, especially where I live. And really, it's um, all part of the plan. He laid it out. He said this would happen too, that the academia as well, and we, like this was very prevalent in 2015. People were talking about how subverted academia was, so this is in the past now, but we know. It's, um, we're actually pretty far into the destabilization phase, I think. He said it would take two to four years, two to six years, or something around that. I think we're pretty far into it. Uh, it might take a bit more, just because you're not subverting just one nation, like it's in some sort of USSR takeover. You're subverting a whole civilization. Within the ten, next ten years, I think things are going to drastically change norms are going to drastically change once again because just look at 2010 to 2020 absolutely insane